Okay, let's talk about the TiVo Little Monster. And as you can see, it's not so little. It's about four foot tall. It's all metal. You need a hand cart to move it around. But as I get to uh, talking about it, let's go ahead and uh, power it up and let it go through its startup sequences so you can see how long it takes to heat the bed up and get into the print mold and all that kind of stuff. Uh, take into consideration that this room that I'm in right now is at... Um, 65 degrees, so about 18 Celsius. And the heat bed will be getting up to 60 degrees when we tell it to print here. So let's just uh, let's just look through this and see if I can find something that I need. And then on that page, foot, 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 leg, body hole. Yeah, let's do that. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to heat up the bed. It started at 17 Celsius and it's going to take it up to a 60. Once the bed's up, the temperature will hear a beep and this uh, whole extruder end will shoot down very close to the, to the bed. And then the nozzle will start to heat up until it does all that. What got me interested in the little monster Originally, I was watching uh, Thomas's channel and Maker Noob and 3D uh, printer, whoever. <laughs> anyway, I was watching all of these reviews and builds and everything, and it just seemed like a, a really nice big Delta, very solid. But at 800 bucks, it was uh, more than I could afford. So I just kept watching all of the normal sites, you know, AliExpress and uh, Gearbest and. Finally, one popped up on AliExpress, and it was uh, delivered to my door. It was $679. I couldn't pass that by. Since I have to buy all my machines to review, nobody seems to want to give me anything for free. So I went ahead and ordered it. took more than a month to come, put it together, and we're going to talk about that. And here's some of the prints. I've done over 30 prints with it. And we'll get back to the quality of that. Let's talk about a couple of the issues. When you're putting it together... Uh, make sure you can tell the top of the front plate because there's a little slot here that this gray cable will drop through. Make sure that you put your stepper motors, your X, your Y, and your Z because there's going to be parts sitting here. You don't want this connector end facing there. It won't fit. You'll end up taking everything apart and putting it back. Um, one issue I had was that the belts which are connected on these one of them was twisted, so after I'd put everything together, I had to take everything apart so I could get in there to untwist the belt and then put it back together right. One other issue I had is there's a there are nylock nuts that go on the back of these uh, bearings that pull the belts tight. I was missing one nylock nut, so I had to stop build, the build until I could find one that would fit. And to make things more secure, I did add, if we can see it in here, I did add a bolt to the top of this whole extruder thing that I cable tie the wires to. That way there's never any flexing or pulling on any of the wires that are going down to the uh, hot end. They're very secure. Brought them all up. And I also secured my wire that goes down to the heat bed to the frame so it's out of the way. So what it's doing now is uh, it had gotten the bed that quickly that it took uh, about two and a half minutes from 18C up to 60C and now it's heating the nozzle. It's well on the way. And then once it gets the nozzle up, it'll go down and tap the center of the bed once and uh, start printing. As far as print quality goes, I had just finished a review on the Folsom Delta and this little vase was on there and I thought it was going to be a cool vase so I found it on Thingiverse and so the first thing I sliced was uh, that same vase file which I printed on uh, the little monster and I used, the monster didn't come with any filament and right then I was waiting for filament to come so I just used what was left of the green that came with the Folsom and of course it ran out near the top. I had a little bit of uh, orange-red filament left, so I just stuck it in there to finish the print. And it, it did an incredible job. I love the fact that there are dual cooling fans um, blowing, you know, for the part print. It uh, makes all the difference in the world. 
as far as quality goes. Speaking of quality, it's 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 as good, if not better, than any other printer that I've had so far. It's just really excellent. Let's see if we can get under the lights here. I mean, good luck seeing the layer lines. And this is printed at 0 0.15. Um, for example, in these ratchet feet alone, this, this project, uh, this robot project, um, I'll post as soon as the uh, Pololu and the servos serv arrive. So that'll be another uh, post on my channel if you want to see how this robot walks and works and lights and does all that stuff. But in these feet, you have your main foot part. You have uh, the ratchet wheels and the ratchets themselves. And then you have the foot covers which just turned out incredibly nice. These are printed with no support. There's no supports at all. It, it was able to bridge all that. No supports on any of these parts. No supports on any of these. I did put supports on this one because it was just so hollowed I wanted to make sure the part would, would come out. This is a leg which will connect with the servo and then go up to the body. But uh, just, just look at that. that uh, that's incredible. This is printed vertically and there is supports but only down here at the bottom to hold it. Um, on this body that I did, uh, the body itself I only have supports under the arms right there. The uh, claws are printed separately in this position on the bed and if I can get them in, in focus here, they turned out really really nice. The uh, white part is a separate part that has we can get light down in there has different uh, LEDs and controls so I'll be able to control some lighting effects that are going on there so this body has what one two three four parts joined together this is part of a, a, a waste servo mount the Pololu will mount here this joins to the servo which will make the body rotate this was printed with some supports which I didn't haven't cleaned this is the way it came out of I mean, I yanked the support out, but I haven't done any cleanup to the part. So it printed it uh, really nice. The quality is just excellent. I find if you just follow the instructions that are in the guide, the thing just really does a good job. I know lots of people have been having fun changing the firmware and doing all kinds of crazy things to theirs, but that's great. They're having a good time. I use my printers as tools and I just want them to work and so far it just works. As far as the slicer goes, I'm actually using the my MK3 slicer. I just put in a new profile for the little monster and went from there and it's been doing a really good job. So right now this is my go-to machine. It seems to print as well as any of the others and it's twice as fast as the Persa with the same quality. In fact, some of the parts have better quality due to the dual cooling part fan. And at $679, it's cheaper. <laughs> but it is a big monster. It, uh, it's not going to be easy to move anywhere else. Once all this uh, snow goes away, which we seem to keep getting every day, it'll eventually have to move out to the shop because uh, you know, the wife doesn't like these printers taking over the house all year long. She puts up with it in the winter, but she won't put up with it all year round. So anyway, if any of you have any uh, YouTubes you did on this, or any Facebook groups, or any personal information you want to add or promote, feel free to do so in the comments. It doesn't bother me a bit. Put links to your work, your comments. As long as it has to do with this printer, I say go for it. I'll put some links in for uh, the AliExpress and GearBest and you can do like I did and just keep checking them every day because every now and then these these things go on sale. And that was how I was able to pick this one up at 679 bucks delivered. So it's a really easy build. All metal parts. This is the first one that doesn't feel like a toy because there's plastic or anything anywhere. It's just really solid, really nicely made. There you go. Talk to you later.